Hi, I am Grace Shaw, CEO of Warmaloo, and I'm going to share with you two stories today. The first, mine. I was born in a developed world. And then the second story of Margaret. She was born in a developing world. And I have one key insight I want you to listen for, that you can develop a new product for a developing country profitably and be able to make huge impacts around the globe. Thank you. So I was born one month preterm in Michigan in the dead of winter. My mom had a complicated 14 hour delivery and was rushed to the hospital where there were further complications. My lungs were underdeveloped. And so they rushed me to a second hospital where I spent my first 11 days of life in an incubator and was able to survive. Baby Margaret, who I met and learned about years later, when I was a material science engineering undergrad, I learned that she had been born preterm, like me, but on her way to the hospital four hours away, her mom died. And immediately the doctors admitted her and they rushed her into the neonatal intensive care unit where unfortunately this incubator, the only incubator in this hospital was full. They had put in an incubator meant for one infant, they had three. And as a result, they put Margaret in an open bed crib because they had no other choice. And Margaret passed away. She died from a preventable cause of death, neonatal hypothermia. That lack of warmth, warmth everyone, is a basic need to these infants, as important as food and water. But not every infant has access. As Dahani mentioned, infants are in developing countries born in areas where there are no incubators. Or if there is an incubator, as we saw in Kenya, there can be anywhere from two to six put into a device meant for one. In addition, we spoke to 100 doctors and nurses, and they told us that the electricity was so unreliable and would go out unpredictably several times a week. We knew there had to be a way to help them. This, this is what drove my team. Over one million infants die from hypothermia globally. And this led my team to develop our life-saving US patented warming technology, where with a single click of a disc, this device is able to generate warmth. You can feel it, so you can pass this around. This is a clinically validated infant warming incubator blanket, able to generate warmth for five to eight hours, and you may reset the pack through boiling up to 100 times. This means that each use costs less than $1. As you can imagine, that has implications beyond the developing world. There are applications for non-electric, truly portable, safe warming in developed world applications. Warmaloo is my non-electric medical advanced material science engineering company saving infants with life-saving warmth. We do this with an all-women production team, all women-led, making these packs and these blankets in Michigan. So thank you, <laughs> which is why it's an honor to be here today. After six long years, we're here. And we focus on providing warming in the medical space, because though we know there are applications elsewhere, after talking to these doctors and nurses, we learned that unlike the other products, we're different because we provide truly safe, warming, which is limited with our utility patent. Second, because we generate warmth for five to eight hours, we generate warmth for two to 50 times longer than the current solution. And finally, because there's not a single cord, not a single battery pack, we are truly portable and we never pose a fire risk. We saw it in person, we saw our competitors in action. This is Embrace, one of the more innovative electric incubator blankets but as our team sat around after plugging it in, it took 45 minutes to generate heat. Electricity is a luxury in places like Kenya. We thought we can do better. So we have been now selling our infant warming blanket for 100 US dollars profitably to medical device distributors on the ground in Africa. In addition, 
We have been now selling the warming pack alone for adult warming applications to US hospital networks like Ascension, who we're working with, and Trinity. Warmaloo is on track. We are a company that has achieved critical revenue milestones. After uh, this, the next six months, we are on track for $300,000 of revenue and to be able to save 10,000 infant lives. Second, we have achieved critical medical device company milestones. Within a year, we cleared the Kenya FDA equivalent. And within the three months at Hillman, we've been able to clear the FDA class one regulatory clearance for adult patient warming. We have two signed distributors. But the most exciting thing we've been able to do is meet with some of these critical leaders in humanitarian aid, going to their offices in Israel and Spain and meeting with Doctors Without Borders and the World Health Organization and 50 of their affiliates. And they want to use our blanket. So Warmalu is tackling infant warming in the Horn of Africa, which is a $200 million market opportunity, part of a larger $2.6 billion opportunity. And who would have thought that saving babies in Africa could lead to us being profitable and being able to tackle non-medical applications, to be able to grow our volume and be able to help drive economies of scale. So we're able to potentially help game day fans stay warm. But we do this with an amazing team. With over 60 years of unique experiences, this is why we took a different path. This is why we developed an advanced medical device for a resource scarce setting. We've got over 60 years of business development, medical device, and material science expertise, and a practicing neonatologist on staff. When she's not working 40 to 50 hours a week at Warmaloo, she's in the hospital saving babies. This year also proved to be the first year we received strategic investment. With funders like the Desai Accelerator and other incubators like WeWork, in addition to Hillman, We've been able to leverage strategic insights from mentors and advisors like Michael Godwin. He's one of the first investors in one of Ann Arbor's more successful companies where they grew from zero to $100 million within five years. And we're able to leverage the insights of Mark Dawes, who has consulted on over 100 innovation projects for P&G in their consumer product goods and medical device division. What's next for Warmaloo? We are on track to now that we've cleared these regulatory bodies, fulfill orders in 12 countries in Africa, and we're currently working on growing our marketing and sales efforts in the US to these other hospital networks. As a result, we're also growing our team. So the fundraise is covering those order fulfillment efforts and growing our team for both those efforts and production. We also recognize the need to scale up our production and semi-automate various portions of it. And finally, last but not least, clear the FDA for class two warming. Upon meeting with the Doctors Without Borders chief medical officer and team, they told us that they wanted to buy and try and pilot our blankets in two sites and then be able to distribute us to all of their chapters. But in order to do so, we need to clear a large regulatory body like the FDA or CE. And then we're able to sell openly in 150 countries around the globe. That is our journey of how we're spreading the warmth to save lives. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to meet you all in the lobby. Thank you.